person in the Fifth District of Virginia, um, but I've also spent about 20 years in the nonprofit sector working on economic fairness, working on poverty reduction and racial reconciliation, fighting for causes that I was inspired to by the great civil rights heroes of Virginia growing up and getting to see uh, the former capital of the Confederacy elect the first black governor in all of the United States made me feel like anything was possible. We grew up here in Virginia, in an inclusive Virginia. We had some serious problems in our past. We still have serious problems today of too many people being left out of the opportunities uh, that we see available. And that's what you all fight for every day in terms of wanting to make sure uh, that we win these elections, but also that we have a more diverse set of candidates in the mix. And we all just got a pretty big kick in the stomach in November. I had eight nieces and four goddaughters and trying to explain to them how a man who embodies toxic misogyny loses to the most qualified candidate, man or woman, that we have ever seen run for office. We have seen the rise of a racial demagogue, and I think we have to take extremely seriously what this man is capable of and what it could do to affect the governor's race this year in our state politics. I know his poll numbers are bad right now, but the pundits that are counting him out were the ones who said he never had a chance to win the primary, never had a chance to win the general election. We saw him taking shots this morning at John Lewis, one of the great civil rights heroes that I had such an honor to be able to spend a little bit of time with when we served. So we need to understand that some really nasty forces have been unleashed in our society, and I don't have to tell this room that. You guys have been fighting these fights as long as we can, but we have this moment I used to be an organizer, and we used to call these crisis <laughs> Where out of a crisis, you have an opportunity. And we have a generation of the most progressive, diverse political coalition that we've ever had in the United States. A coalition that finally looks like the Commonwealth and looks like the country. And that coalition, that generation, and I don't mean how old you are, I mean when you came into politics. Were you inspired in part by that idea of hope and change a few years ago? And people are trying to decide was that all just a mirage? Were we fooled into thinking that those sorts of things were possible? And people want that cause to believe in. And I think people around the Commonwealth and frankly around the country are looking for a way to engage on these issues. And I think in particular we see uh, young women and people of color who want to have a voice in this coalition. And we want this campaign to be a place that reflects that and speaks to that. So I was really proud that the, and this is not due to me, this is due to Speaker Pelosi, that the first bill I ever got to vote on in Congress was the Lilly Ledbetter Act. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have, as I was handed here this morning, we don't have to have this. We'll have equal pay for women. Because that is a serious issue in terms of gender in this election. But you know what else is? Poverty. Mm -hmm. Poverty disproportionately affects women, particularly single moms. Minimum wage. We think we have to get to $15 an hour minimum wage because 60% of the people on minimum wage are women. We need to make sure that we have paid medical and family leave that disproportionately affects women's access into the uh, workplace. And we do have to make sure that that most fundamental of choices for women, that of reproductive access, is protected. And I want to be absolutely clear on this. I have been and remain pro-choice. I will fight for it. I've marched for Roe v. Wade before, and I will do it again. I made a pledge to my constituents about this two-pack vote, and I've expressed for years that that was the worst vote I ever took. But I also voted for Planned Parenthood funding. I voted for D.C.'s right to use taxpayer dollars to fund abortions. We voted for making sure that pre- and postnatal care was guaranteed under Obamacare. We voted to make sure that being a woman was no longer a pre-existing condition in our insurance company and our medical work. And after that, I spent a lot of time with reproductive justice advocates who were kind enough to come and tell me stories, some of them here in this room. And I went and joined one of the most powerful advocacy organizations in the country. And we worked to fight trap laws, not just here in Virginia, but across the country. So we absolutely have to guarantee that reproductive rights and reproductive access because we know that it's disproportionately poorer women and women of color who may not have access to the same constitutional guarantees that should not have a class or a color classification. But economic fairness right now is one of those things that we have to be fighting for. 
we do have good macroeconomic uh, in, uh, data. We have good, you know, uh, news there. And I think Governor McCall and Ralph and others deserve a lot of credit for that. But we have to have inclusive economic growth. We have to have inclusive economic growth that doesn't leave some communities behind or some families behind or some regions of the state behind. And we can do that. We can build that inclusive economic growth. And we can make sure that Virginia continues to be a place that's a welcoming community. Uh, Virginia for lovers, not haters. This is an opportunity because we've rebranded the state thanks to a series of Democratic governors and thanks to movements around the state that have made it more welcoming. So what you're going to find in me is someone who continues uh, to veto these terrible legislations uh, that come through uh, that are an offense to women, that will continue to advocate not just for reproductive rights, but for the economic rights and equality of women to make sure that we make daycare more affordable, paid medical leave, wages are going up for those on the bottom end of the scale. And because I'm getting to wind up, I just want to say thank you very much. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. I look forward to learning a lot from you here and beyond. Thank you. Thank you.